when one thinks of mutiny, they think of a crew of an old pirate ship overthrowing their captain and making him walk the plank. This is played in media as either the oppressed crew taking the ship from the evil captain. I'm taking command of this ship. Mr. Fry, I have the keys to the arms chest. Or the ungrateful crew tossing the lovable but incompetent captain off the ship. Mutinies aren't just things of stories, they're real, and they still happen today, but not in the ways that you would expect. This is the story of Apollo 7 astronaut Walter Schirra and the first mutiny in space. The voyage around the moon was made in two phases. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Apollo 7 launched on October 11th, 1968. This was to be the first manned mission since the tragedy of Apollo 1, and would serve as a shakedown mission for the command and service modules. It was manned by three astronauts who intended to spend 11 days in low Earth orbit. The crew of the mission were Crew Commander Walter M. Schirra, the Command Module Pilot Don F. Easel, and Lunar Module Pilot are Walter Cunningham. Before the launch of the rocket, there was already problems between the crew and NASA engineers. This was to be the first manned mission since the tragedy of Apollo 1, and even though NASA had deemed the Saturn 1B and the Apollo capsule crew-worthy, the astronauts were not convinced. There were regular arguments between the crew and engineers about changes made to the capsule. In fact, it was eerily similar to the buildup of Apollo 1. The second problem was the waste management system on the capsule. The astronauts described it as adequate but annoying. The bags smelled awful and were not convenient to use. Both of these problems assured that the astronauts were not 100% at launch, but little did they know that things were about to get a whole lot worse. 15 hours after launch, Shira, the crew commander, fell ill with the head cold. Now, that may not seem like the end of the world, but if you've ever had a head cold, then you would know they can be very irritating. To make things worse, while in the microgravity environment of low Earth orbit, there was no gravitational force to pull the mucus out of their head. There was little relief. In space, an astronaut needs to be at their full abilities at all times. And on this 11-day mission and a capsule just big enough for three people, this can be disastrous. One of the objectives of the mission was to have the first live broadcast from space. But Shira wanted to delay or even cancel the broadcast due to the already heavy workload. NASA saw this broadcast as a way to gain public support for the Apollo program and considered it to be crucial to the mission. The TV time was also poorly planned, as it was going to end up being during a crucial and tricky rendezvous maneuver, so Shira was stern in delaying. When NASA objected to this delay, Shira told him that the TV would have to be delayed and there would be no further discussion. Later, after the maneuver was done, the astronauts did their broadcast, and they seemed to have enjoyed themselves during it. That's Walter Shira. Yesterday, Paul Haney was heard to say that uh, bearded people are. Don, you want to move over to your. Oh, that's it. The mission goes on without any big issues for the rest of the flight. Well, up until re entry. Tempers flared again when Houston asked the tired and sick astronauts to put their helmets on for re entry. The astronauts refused to comply. Where the previous incident was only a small breach of protocol, this was straight mutiny. It's been standard protocol on every mission up to this to wear your helmet on re entry. But remember, these astronauts, they all have stuffy noses. They're tired and they're irritated as it is. Putting a helmet on would prevent them from their only form of relief, pinching their noses and blowing. The helmets did not have open visors, and this would make that kind of relief impossible. So, Shira refused to comply. Ground Control was not happy with this. They would wind up not wearing their helmets, and splash down doing just fine. This mutiny would go down as the first in a couple in space travel history. And these astronauts, once they landed, they would never leave Earth again. 
they would also have a 40-year delay on their Distinguished Service Medals, medals that were presented to all other astronauts upon landing. This may not be as exciting as the pirate uprisings to throw their captain off the ship, but it has influenced NASA protocol greatly and we still see the impacts of this event today. The psychological impact of space travel on an astronaut is still being studied and NASA is trying to allow for more flexibility for their space travelers. Another thing that NASA is now researching is better cold medicine for microgravity environment. Every day these things are improving and it's making space travel safer and more efficient. And you can thank an irritated Walter Schirra for that. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to keep making these videos, but this little furball keeps getting in my way. So if you would like, please leave a comment below, like the video, or subscribe to the channel. Nala would greatly appreciate it. Yes, I'm using you to get attention. Don't you like that? Blew our thing out.